Well, good afternoon. I am really excited for the guest that we have today. But first, let's handle house business. Mi nombre es Mercedes Young. Soy la presidenta de la Cámara de Comercio Hispana de la Bahía de Tampa Bay. Y hoy vamos a estar hablando sobre un tema que es muy delicado y muy importante para nuestra comunidad. Pero primero le quiero decir que estamos en servicio a la comunidad, no solamente a la comunidad de negocios. Y si quiere saber más sobre lo que hacemos, puede buscar en el www tampahispanicchamber.com y pueden ver las diferentes actividades que tenemos para servir a nuestra comunidad. O pueden llamar de lunes a viernes de 7 de la mañana a 3 de la tarde y no me sé el número completamente porque no llamo, soy la que contesta el teléfono. Pueden llamar al 813-867-3550. Pero sin más preámbulos, quiero presentarle a Rose. We can, and we were just talking about what can stands for, can stands for Community AIDS, AIDS Network. Network. And I want you to know that ACAN was one of the agencies that approached the chamber mm -hmm. to come and support us. And the office is right down the street. But when I really had the meeting and, and God, and you guys took the time to explain what you stand for, mm -hmm. it changed everything. Rose is originally from Puerto Rico, but we're going to give her a pass today. Yeah, <laughs> my family is from Puerto Rico. I'm from New York, so oh, I'm a New York. Yeah, New York. There is the difference. There is the difference. But let's talk a little bit, uh, uh, Rose, if, if you don't mind. Tell me a little bit what got you working with Ken. Yeah. What was your drive? What was you? It, because I do know that you love what you do. I do. Um, I started my work in HIV, gosh, 1996. Okay. Um, I started in Massachusetts and I ran a community drop in center under the uh, ideology of harm reduction, which was a fairly new uh, mm -hmm. intervention at the time, but it was about meeting people where they're at with no judgment, no coercion, uh, working with very marginalized populations and getting them connected with HIV care as far as testing and treatment. So I did that for 10 years, loved what I did, relocated to Florida in 2005, Yay. and um, immediately started trying to find another HIV home. I actually started working in Central Florida first with a small organization called Miracle of Love, which actually just recently partnered with CAM, so I feel like it's full circle. Yeah. Um, but I have uh, volunteered with an, uh, another organization called The Smart Ride, which is a nonprofit that raises money for HIV in the Florida communities. and. Funnily enough, CAN is one of the sponsors of that. So I just felt like it was just destiny for me to start working with CAN. Mm -hmm. Okay, that is great. That is great. But I will tell you, we want to get into some really deep questions. One of the things that I do love about CAN is that you guys do a lot of disparity studies. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what gets you in the position that you are not only here in this community, but in the country with the support that you provide. Yeah. So what type of disparities in health outcomes do Hispanics or Latinos, mm -hmm. people with HIV experience, like compared to other racial or ethnic groups? We definitely experience higher rates of HIV prevalence, and it's at disproportionate levels in regards to our population, right? Because we are considered still a minority in this country, but we have very high rates of HIV prevalence. Um, also, we have very low rates of testing and treatment. And there are lots of factors that play roles in that that are barriers for people getting connected to care. Wow. The, when you talk about, you know, that we are minorities and yes, we are, you know, the numbers and then the lack of testing, the lack of testing, that definitely. So, so why do these disparities happen? What do, what do you think? Why? I think a lot of factors play a role. Um, sometimes it can be things like lack of insurance, lack of transportation. Obviously there are cultural barriers as far as language. Um, there is sometimes a little bit of a lack of knowledge within the medical field in regards to HIV, the updates and HIV treatment. Mm -hmm. Obviously, uh, medical uh, professionals are very, very busy. So it's very difficult for them to take the time to actually go to an updated training or hear from one of us to get ed educated about what the, mm -hmm. the progress that we've made in HIV care. So these are differently, different barriers that can ab absolutely impact people's continuum of care for HIV services. Okay. Now, I I remember 20 years ago that when you say HIV was like saying cancer was like a death yeah. sentence, but it yeah. doesn't seem to be that way. It shouldn't be, right? Um, okay. Unfortunately, when we were first impacted by it, it was um, as a death sentence. I've been doing this testing since 1996, and so 
Unfortunately, I was at the beginning of the epidemic where I was having to give people those type of results and talk to them about end of life and oh. plans. Um, I'm happy to say that we've made incredible progress in the last 40 years. Mm -hmm. And so we are now at a place where it's very manageable. Almost like a chronic illness like diabetes, hypertension, high blood pressure. It's just a chronic illness that you it just, is. you live with it. You, yep. you just manage it. Yep. Yes. Um, and we want to normalize that. We want folks to understand that it is an, an uh, absolutely manageable disease. It is not curable, but it's something that you live with. And you come in, you get treatment, you get your lab work done, you take your medication. Folks can get to a place where they, what's called undetectable, where if you're living with HIV and you're taking your medication, you get a viral load that is completely suppressed at a certain level. You can, It's not spreading through your system and you cannot transmit it to anyone else. Oh, so okay. yeah, it's amazing that what the progress that we've made. Wow, wow, that is that is great to know. So, what are the implications for public practice? The two biggest implications are stigma and discrimination. So, um, those are the biggest barriers for folks of, of our of our community to face. Um, unfortunately, it's more so stigma within um, Latino women where yes. we face a lot of barriers in regards to getting education or even speaking about things in regards to our sexual health. So we live in a lot of um, lack of knowledge, but um, men in um, the Latin community face a lot of discrimination when it comes to navigating healthcare. And then even more so black Hispanic men. Um, so these are different things that definitely impact us. Wow. You know, that is interesting because um, one of the things that I, I know growing up, we never talked about sex and they didn't teach about sex in school either. Right. So I know that we live in a different era, but it's still, I uh, have a lot of girlfriends and, you know, I'm only 29 and a half. So, of course, I don't have a lot of experience. So okay. with that said, <laughs> I, I don't know why you put that face, but anyway. <laughs> <laughs> and um, but it, with that said, it's still at my age and our group, we don't talk about sexuality. I know, I know. We just don't. I don't know if it's the generation that I came from. I I know for sure that it's cultural. It's just not something. And 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 I tell you because I raised my children in the United States, mm -hmm. and I remember when my daughter wanted to talk to me about certain things, and I'm like, I don't care to know. Like I just. I'm okay without you telling me right. I mean, I, I'm, I'm just so fine without knowing that. I see. I was on the other spectrum, on the other side of the spectrum, where my kids. I was like, well, the, we're going to learn how to put condoms on. Yes, you're t I know you're only 12 and 13. Oh, and they have well, this is the dildo, and we're going to learn how to put these on, and we're going to do relay races. Yes, we are, because you're going to learn how to do this proficiently in the fastest. Oh my God, can you imagine? But anyway, but I came from a generation that I, I, I'm telling you, I don't. I mean, I just didn't see. Yeah those things that was never a thing it was never a conversation now we go to adult party and the balloons are condoms let's talk about that and you know we latino we come from piñata so <laughs> i'm like these people are so funny balloons <laughs> we, yeah we you know i think um our culture plays a role in that definitely you know obviously religion is a huge part of our lives yes and that plays a role in regards to what we can speak about what we can't yeah, speak yeah. about Yes. and what we're comfortable with. And uh, unfortunately, there is, you know, the other side of that, that coin where we're walking into adulthood and not having the knowledge that we need, right, to keep ourselves safe. And so that's why I'm always, when we do counseling and testing, I, I do testing at, at our clinics mm -hmm. and I meet one-on-one -on -one with folks and I tell them all the time, I really would encourage you to get very confident and comfortable in your sexual health. Yes. Navigate those conversations. Practice with your friends. You know, you're you do, you're getting tested today for a whole panel of STIs and HIV. The minute you leave here, call a girlfriend and say, "Hey, I just got tested for chlamydia and gonorrhea and syphilis." And you know, the more often that you practice that conversation, the easier it'll flow when you need it. Yes, and when you're across a sexual partner. Yes, yes, that is that is very wise advice. So, how can healthcare field address these issues? Um, which I think is almost an oxymoron question. I mean, it, you know, I think we can all play a role, right? Okay. And so as far as the healthcare field, we would love to see them become much more culturally aware, right? Um, and yeah. um, interpret and incorporate things that are culturally sensitive to our mm -hmm. community. Um, they can be proactive in addressing anything that they might find that could be discriminatory or enhance stigma within their systems. And put in place, you know, put in place things that will eliminate those things for us. That'll be a little bit easier for us to be able to feel safe enough to go into clinics. Mm -hmm. 
Let me ask you something. Is mm-hmm. there, and this is just kind of an off question, Yay. is there such a thing as a sexual health month or week there is. or day? <laughs> tell me because I, yeah. I think we can come up with something very creative. I, I don't, I can't tell you off the top of my head, but there is. When we usually, if you follow CAN, you can, you yes. can follow our website and we usually will, um, all, all over our social media, we're always posting all of our events, but we're always planning events right around our awareness days. Pretty much every month there's an awareness day and, uh, and um, October actually is the Latino HIV awareness day. Um, October is Latinos it, HIV. Uh, it's in October. So because October is Hispanic heritage. So so we're going to get it all. Yeah, we're going to get it all. <laughs> because you know what I'm thinking? I know and I give this double dare to all of the chamber members and all of the people that get to okay. hear this podcast. Le voy a dar un reto a todos los Latinos que escuchan este podcast y más que nada los miembros de la Cámara y a los, todos los que estamos ya en este país que estamos expandiendo nuestra cultura, que en el mes de octubre hagan un reto, son 30 días de regalar un condón por día a una buena amistad. O se pueden hacer una cita para la prueba. O una cita para la prueba. Yo sé que con CAN, si se meten en la computadora o en su teléfono, CAN es C-A-N, igualito como se escucha CAN. Y ellos no tienen ningún precio para ustedes. Así que esto es un servicio que el gobierno federal apoya, que está disponible para la comunidad. Eh, Hay muchas cosas que yo sé que en nuestra comunidad experimentamos, que nuestras abuelitas que no, que tienen flores blancas, que flores... Dios mío, no, tienes una infección, debes ir al médico, debes ir a revisarte. Exacto. Porque todas las enfermedades, prácticamente, cuando se atienden a tiempo, tenemos mejor posibilidad de sobrevivencia. Absolutamente. Así que eso definitivamente, ya saben, en el mes de octubre vamos a regalar condones. Yeah. I'll be happy to bring them by. Así mismo es, y vamos a hacer nuestro examen de... With the enfermedades venerias. Uh-huh. So, la otra pregunta, how can the community address these issues? Having these type of conversations, mm-hmm. right? And we have conversations around the coffee table, around the kitchen table, you know, on, on the front steps, you know, at a church. We want to normalize these conversations as much as possible because the more often that we have these conversations and they're normalizing them, mm-hmm. the easier it'll be for people to feel comfortable about coming in and get tested, right? Mm-hmm. We all play a role in this, like I said before. One of the things that I tell folks is, you know, when we normalize these conversations, people who are living with something like HIV, like herpes, like hepatitis or, or syphilis, they'll feel more safe to disclose. Mm -hmm. And that's what we want. We want people to feel safe enough to tell us their status. We want to know that we can be protected and, and, and they won't be judged. They won't face any violence, you know, that those are the things that unfortunately people living with HIV face on a regular basis. And so we all can be accountable for that. We want them to disclose to us, right? And that's honestly one of the biggest stigmas and one of the biggest problems in within our community, the Latino community is disclosure of HIV status. They're scared. Folks living with HIV are scared to tell other people because they face as something as simple as rejection or as big as violence, you know, and even death. Well, and so if I'm not living with something, it's my responsibility to create a space that's safe for you to tell me that you're living with something. Yes, absolutely. You know, it's really interesting because we talk so openly about 25% of the community, the Hispanic community is facing diabetes. Mm-hmm. And anybody would offer you a cake because they just take the medicine and you'll be okay. They'll offer you a cookie, una galletita maria, un arroz con gandule, ¿sabes? Y, y parece mentira porque estamos hablando de un, otra cosa que en realidad es utilizar un medicamento diario igual como el manejar una, una diabetes. I mean, we, we, we joke a lot about how Vicks cures everything. Yes, it does. <laughs> yes, it does. Yes. I, I'm not I, I'm supposed to say that and I allow, but yes. But the fact of the matter is, I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> you did not. We have, we have those, you know, we have these things in our culture that, you know, are tried and true for us, right? But um, we want folks to know there's a lot of... Vicks cures, cures HIV. <laughs> no. no. Okay. Okay. We got that out we there. Don't, we, we don't know. We do not want any misinformation no, out there. No, no, no. Uh, Vicks no cura HIV. It does not. No, but we have amazing medications that can keep it under control. Okay. Right? And the sooner you get onto medication, the quicker you can get it under control. Okay. It's untransmittable. It's not spreading through your system doing damage. You can't put anyone else at risk for it. So that's why it's important to get tested regularly. And then if you do test reactive, or positive, get onto treatment as soon as possible. And people are able to continue with their lives, have children, get married, 
there I know people who are living with HIV they're healthier than me and I don't have HIV they 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 are really taking really, very good care of themselves mm-hmm. one of the things that I really want folks to know is HIV is very is still a thing it's very very prevalent in our communities and the folks who really are um, on the, on top of you know taking their medications and things like that are not the folks who are are at risk for anything. It's the folks who don't know they have it, right? If you don't know you have it, era como con con la pandemia, yeah, eh, coughing y y la y ta, me le voy a decir algo para mí me parece que hacerse un examen mm-hmm. y a practicar prevención, yeah, verdad? Me parece que eso es un símbolo de amor. I, I love that. Es un símbolo de amor. Yeah. De que amamos a nuestro prójimo, amamos a nuestro ser querido. Si ustedes como hombre o mujer conocen a alguien recientemente y llegaste en una relax y, y llegan a, ¿sabe? a conocerse al punto que van a tener una relación sexual íntima, eso es amor. Cuidarse para cuidar a la otra persona. Exacto. Yo sé que cuando yo, cuando la, con la pandemia, yo estuve pasando por una jornada de cáncer uh-huh. y mi esposo trabajaba dando clases en la universidad y en la universidad donde él trabajaba le dijeron que tenía que dar clase en persona y él me amaba lo suficiente que tuvo que dejar ese trabajo porque en ese tiempo cuando yo estaba lidiando con la quimioterapia eh, en mi sistema de inmunización estaba, estaba comprometido así, eh, o sea que había, había estado ultrajado uh-huh. así que él decidió no voy a poder trabajar mientras ella esté pasando por eso yeah. eso es amor Yeah. Sí, sacrificio para la familia financieramente, pero eso es amor. Eh, uno agarrar y decir, ¿sabes qué? Quiero tener una, una relación sólida eh, para el resto de mi vida con alguien. Estoy dispuesta a salir en, a dates, a conocer a alguien y ir a hacerse un examen físico. Es, yeah. es como ir a comprarse un vestido y yo necesito saber qué talla uso. <risa> uso una talla 8, una talla 12. Uno tiene que saber qué talla usa para comprarse un vestido, ¿verdad? Así que yo digo que es tan sencillo como eso si lo hablamos. Yeah. Y lo hacemos sencillo. Yeah. Si no es un tabú. It shouldn't be. It shouldn't be. And the best form of self-love, the best form of love is self-love, right? Exacto. That you show that love to someone else, but also that you love yourself. Is you it know, like that, that's one of the things I think, especially Latino women, we always put ourselves last, you know, and uh, we really need to start pouring into our, our own cups and taking care of ourselves and loving on ourselves. And part of loving ourselves is taking care of our sexual health. Exactamente. No hay nada más lindo que uno tener una relación saludable con uno mismo. Yeah. No solamente por dentro, por fuera, pero con nuestra sexualidad, con mm-hmm. nuestro poder femenino o masculino. Es, es, es un don, es un regalo. Mm-hmm. Es parte del regalo de la vida. Ya. Yeah. En realidad lo es. Así que, eh, Rose, ¿qué te puedo decir? ¿Qué últimas palabras quisieras darle a la audiencia de que la gente comprenda que es tan importante. O sea, estamos hablando de vida o muerte, sí lo hacen a tiempo, yeah. sí se cuidan. Yeah. ¿Qué palabras quieres, quisieras compartir? I would love for folks to just come into CAN Community Health and get tested with us. Um, it's not who you are, it's what you do. So, you know, people who think it's still a gay disease, is, that's incorrect. Um, HIV does not discriminate. Right now, honestly, the only true victims um, of HIV are people who are still being born with it. And uh, unfortunately, folks who end up HIV positive from a sexual assault. Um, but right now, as adults, if we're consenting adults and we are sexually active, we have to hold ourselves accountable for our own sexual health. And so it's a, it's a very good thing and it's a positive thing and it's a shine, sign of strength to be able to take care of yourself that way. So come into CAN, um, come in and get tested with us. We have a diverse staff. Uh, we have bilingual staff, so you won't have to worry about me speaking Spanglish to you. We have, we do have Spanish speaking staff. We have Portuguese speaking staff. Um, and we are um, pretty much everywhere <laughs> that you can think of. If you go to our website, you can look up our clinics. The testing is free um, and we also offer treatment. And we give you different options like PrEP and NPEP which are different preventative measures. So not we give out free condoms too, but we try to make as many different options available to you as possible. So come check us out. Um, uh, another thing is that CAN is part of the Cámara de Comercio Hispana. Así que si tienen alguna pregunta de dónde están las clínicas, yeah. de qué servicio ellos proveen, por favor, llamen a la oficina al 813 
787-737-3550 eh, y alguien le va a contestar. Y estamos aquí para servir en todas áreas porque yo sé que somos una plataforma de compañías de negocios, pero el negocio no se puede llevar si uno no está bien saludablemente. Así que muchas gracias por lo que hace Rose, gracias por, por lo que ustedes, el, el estandarte que toman en la comunidad, no solamente en Florida, sino en realidad en todos los Estados Unidos. Así que busquen a Can C A N o llamen a la Cámara de Comercio Hispano y nosotros con mucho gusto les vamos a dar las conexiones y vamos a tener una feria de salud el 7 de octubre en el campus de Ana G. Méndez, de 10 de la mañana a 2 de la tarde, y Cam va a tener un bus allí, y vamos a estar dando clases a las chicas, a las mujeres, que todavía tienen reto en decir no y aprender el por qué es tan importante cuidarse su salud sexual. Así que vengan a esa feria, todo va a ser absolutamente gratis, y espero que Rose esté allí, porque tenemos oh, que tener nuestro toque, nuestro <risa> toque de Puerto Rico. Así que muchas gracias, mi nombre es Mercedes Young, con la Cámara de Comercio Hispana de la Bahía de Tampa Bay. Bye.